Hey everybody, welcome back to Absolutely Marvel and DC. I'm Dylan, that's Dan, and today we're going to be talking about Legends of Tomorrow, episode 6, I think, of season something. You know, one of these days we'll look up the episode <laughs> number before we start. Well, I usually have notes, but I forgot to write notes this time, so it's nebulous. You you know the episode, it's in the thumbnail and probably the title. Uh, th exactly. This is the one that you have been calling... Since, like, episode one, which mm -hmm. is, like, the big, like, dedicated to what Sarah's up to episode. Um, yeah, so we, we, we get a lot of, of that. Basically, the episode is just uh, Bishop, who's, like, the villain of the season, and Sarah kind of going back and forth while everyone's trying to save her. Um, so, mm -hmm. and then at, at the end, spoilers, it's revealed that, oh, no, Sarah's a clone. But who cares? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was really good. I actually, so I will say, um, I'll give a review for you guys that are watching and you might have forgotten. Bishop is also a clone as well as all the yes. Ava clones. And I really, I actually really liked the whole idea that the Ava clones are just like mass produced clones. You have a bunch at the same time. Whereas Bishop is just like a, a recycling clone where mm -hmm. it's, there's only one of him alive at any point in time. It reminds me honestly of Rick and Morty when like Rick just keeps dying and waking up in someone else's resurrection vat but um i do i really liked that concept i thought it was a really cool way of doing it because at first i was like is this the guy that created the ava clones like what what exactly is going to go on there um but i kind of liked the fact that it's it's more of a actually you know i would say mr sinister would be a better way of yeah. saying it because he improves upon himself like each time that he mm -hmm. comes back um, I thought that was just a really cool concept. Plus, I like the guy as an actor, the guy playing Bishop. Really? Like, the way that he's playing the character, I actually kind of enjoy. Like, it's I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm that's why it's so good. Like, that's why it's so good is he's a very hateable villain. Mm -hmm. But he's got the... He's got the fun goofiness with a little bit of the serious villainous that fits with the legends. And mm. I think that's why I like it. Because sometimes when it comes to the villains in legends, you really can't have them be too serious. Yeah, like right. they tried that a little bit with the whole Astra and like the people in hell and stuff. And like they were a little bit more serious with the fates and such. But like this one, I kind of like that. They're just like, you know what? No, we're going to make this charismatic, charming guy that is just a clone and is trying to take over the world and make spider people, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I actually I, I think that's actually kind of fun. I I do enjoy it. Uh, clearly, I am a minority with that one uh well, that's but, it's interesting because i i kind of think the opposite about all of that <laughs> really <laughs> okay like i i prefer my legends villains to be serious and so that the legends can take the piss out of them um okay like th well, i remember I specifically like the with the the doom patrol not the doom patrol the uh the legion of doom um mm -hmm. that season where they're like those are three very like like toxic masculinity like like we're we're villains we're gonna uh hate each other but also we want to kill the legends um and the because they're all super serious and then the legends like it contrasts with the absurdity of the legends very well mm -hmm. um and i think that's what's happening on a microcosm scale with sarah and bishop it's just flipped where mm -hmm. Bishop is in the case of the legends where he's super silly and, and, and goofy. And because Sarah is divorced from the legends right now, she's the serious one, but she's the hero in the situation. So that dynamic is working. But my concern is, is once the legends show up and reunite with Sarah, they're all going to be their goofy selves. And then Bishop is just kind of gonna, they're either going to have to turn him into a serious villain and betray what he's been so far Mm -hmm. or he's just gonna feel really weird like 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 i can almost picture like nate and bayrod like meeting bishop and being like hey i like this guy you want to join our team <laughs> just because he, like, he seems be like surprised. one of them <laughs> i would not be surprised if like it turns out they somehow hack the cloning and kill him and then the cloned version joins yeah. the team wouldn't be surprised I would be, I, but, I, uh, he annoys me like just at, on like a base level <laughs> i know that's like see, he's supposed to be hateable um, right 
But see, but, like that's that's the thing is I I do agree with what you're saying, but at the same time, we've kind of played out all the different serious villains. If we did sure. another serious villain, it would be kind of the same thing. Whereas when it's this more charismatic version, right now with the Sarah Lance, it it is a perfect dynamic with the two of them, and you can kind of already tell that once the rest show up, it. It's either going to go in a sense of he's going to try and trick them all into being like, oh, this guy's fun loving. It's it's all good. Uh, Or it's going to be one of those ones where it it's going to be a classic situation where you've got the happy guy that's like trying to keep positive, trying to keep positive and then just snaps. Right. And goes like full on. Okay, you know what? This is what we're doing, which he kind of did just a little bit in this episode when he learns that uh, Mick Rory is on the planet. And then he goes, all right, let's lower the dome and kill everyone out there. Like you could start to see that little bit more of the serious villainous side. Sociopath. Deep down underneath. Yeah. But uh, it does also bring up the question of who cloned him? Who created? Well, I think it's like automatic. Or was he a, a base dude. model and he clo- cloned yeah. himself over time? Yeah, I think that's what. And that, that's okay. the other thing that I don't really like about his character is there's a lot of stuff that isn't clear about him. Like mm-hmm. the him creating the Ava clones, like seemed like it was supposed to be the last puzzle piece that fit into like Ava's history. As if they foreshadowed that earlier, like like there was this grand guy who created all the Ava clones when they first mm. introduced them. And I don't think there was. Like it was just like we were introduced to Ava clones as like a thing that would happen in the future, but there was no like yeah. grand arbiter that created all of them. Um and that was just kind of retconned in here, and we they didn't explain a lot of it. Like mm. like we really don't know his motives super well. Um we don't really know where he came from. Like they yeah. haven't given him a super great origin uh and i think that's a lot like there's a lot of pomp and circumstance to this character and i'm just i'm not sold like i'm not sold on 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 bishop even even if i wasn't annoyed with just him as a person um he he doesn't have like the strong ties to other characters like even like villains in this show haven't ever really been that great it's never really been about them but like at least astra uh, last season was a really good like foil to John. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of like story ties there, even though it was sort of a retcon, but like it's a thing about his character and they spent a lot of time showing us backstory and, and working them into each other. Um, so, and that's just not like, like he has like no ties to anyone except for Ava and, right. and Ava, like, honestly, I feel like Ava should be the one that is captured, not Sarah. Like um, the obscure, like the clone where it's like, hey, this is the one that's not normal. The one that broke away from like programming and stuff like yeah. that. Like Which make it up seems some story like reason, but like. She'll show up is- and like run a, like lead the uprising of all the Ava clones. Oh, sure. <laughs> or she'll, or Gary will. Like Ava will be like, this is weird. And then Gary's like, no, I'm going to take them all because this one's right. clearly in love with me now. Um, uh, uh, but I, I don't know. It's strange because it's like they picked the more it's definitely i hope it's an interesting confrontation between ava and bishop i hope they do that well because not only has not only is bishop responsible for ava's creation but now he has kidnapped uh and in ava's mind right now murdered essentially um his her fiance so yeah. like it's that's going to be a fun confrontation i hope they you know do it well yeah I think uh, one thing you said that made me kind of click a light bulb was I feel like this season so far has had a lot of retcons. Like, I feel like this one has had the most where you go, wait a second, Gary's taking his glasses off all the time. Why is he now (laughs) doing it? And he's an alien or like, like there's a lot of things that are starting to change up a little bit, which I'm not entirely sold on, but... Uh, we've talked a bit about the Ava, Bishop, Sarah Lance. The Constantine side of this, though, mm-hmm. I don't know where they're going with that. Because honestly, Neither John Constantine <laughs> without magic is boring. I mean, I why? Right. Like I'm, I feel like, I feel like him having a like an actual love interest 
and him losing his powers should not happen at the same time. I feel like both of them are just very big changes to the character that I am not the biggest fan of. Like, John Constantine without magic, I'm just... I am not a fan of, and I really hope they don't move towards he no longer has his powers, and Astra is now the uh, magic person mm-hmm. on the team, which I really hope that's not the case, because Constantine, probably one of my favorite characters on the show, and this episode kind of did him a disservice, in my opinion. I think, unfortunately, I think that's exactly what they're doing. I that's think what I'm scared they, of. and I, I tried to look up to see if there's any news stories about it nothing immediately came up there might be some stuff if i went digging but Mm -hmm. um like when when matt ryan who plays constantine in the show first showed up that it was always like he was there it was he was billed as special appearance by matt ryan in the credits yes um and i believe he was a reg he became a regular the season following that Uh, Mm um but i i noticed something specific i don't know if this has been the case for every episode of the season or if it has been the case for a while but he is still being billed at least in this episode as a special appearance um, oh interesting so i i th- i think it's possible this show is doing what it's been doing for a while is it's going to pair two characters up and they're gonna write them off the show <laughs> so, i actually i would not be surprised if they do that and bring back the original zari yeah either I, yeah like, they either bring back the original zari or both zaris are gone mm-hmm. um and astra because because if you think about it, Astra could take uh, Constantine's place and Easily. Spooner could take Zari's place. Well, Spooner so, and they're already kind of putting Bayrod a little into that because originally well, yeah, Zari's big while. one was the whole right. having the wind based powers and they split that thing mm-hmm. up, which still they did not kind Strange. of clarify how she's like, oh, well, I'm in the it. thing. Well, now <laughs> there's two. Uh <laughs> It's still the yeah, it seems like state, a pretty but... powerful like uh thing to be able to just because i remember that the totems were like a huge plot point for like yeah. an entire season and now zari's inside of one and can just make another <laughs> okay it's sure yeah that one but i would <laughs> i really hope they don't get rid of constantine i uh yeah he him joining the show i think was probably one of the like a really good change they did to the show but I think you are right. They This is standard Legends fashion. They'll pair people up, and then they get off the show. And they pair other people up, and they take them off the show. Obviously, Sarah Lance is not going to get taken off because she's basically the leader. She, she is like the Flash or Green Arrow of this show, mm-hmm. I feel like, in terms of the oh, team yeah. I mean, and the dynamic. She's the poster stuff. girl. She's the one who exactly. like represents the show. Like I feel like, you know, and you could make an argument that like uh Sarah and Ava are getting married, they could write them off the show as well, but I would yeah. I would sooner see the show ending with their marriage as a whole mm-hmm. instead of them being written off and someone else taking the helm because they really they don't really have anyone else like like speaking like from the CW's perspective, like Sarah is the one that would lead the show. The next logical person I feel would be Nate, but I don't think they want another white guy like being the poster boy of, of a show, like thinking that, about what the CW not would serious do enough like that, like in yeah. terms of the show, he he's great as a side character because of how goofy he is. Exactly. And because of how serious he can be sometimes, but I feel like as like the leader, it I don't think that would work. I don't think mm-hmm. that would work well at all. Yeah, there's not there's not a whole lot of people in the cast right now that could that could represent the show. Um mm-hmm. so yeah, Sarah, and that's another weird thing is that they just say they clearly decided to to have Sarah be away for like half of this season. Um, which I maybe that was a COVID thing, but like similar or some other circumstance, like, uh, I know you don't watch Supergirl, but Melissa Benoist is, uh, the same plot structure is happening, where she's, like, off on her own thing, doing her own, um, she's trapped in the, uh, what's it called? The prison where all the Kryptonians go. Phantom Zone? Yeah, she's trapped in the Phantom Zone right now, Lex Luthor put her there, and, um, they, the reason for that is because Melissa Benoist was pregnant during, like, Oh, the starting okay. of filming that so they were like let's film all of her scenes as quickly as possible uh, so she could go on maternity leave and then when she's done having her baby she can come back and actually be on the show with the rest of the cast mm-hmm. um 
So maybe there's some circumstance like that with Katie Lotz, and that's that's a reason why she's you know basically only has scenes with um with Bishop because mm-hmm. has she even she's interacted like once with an Ava clone and a couple times with Gary. Um, yeah, I don't think she's like directly interacted with anyone else. I don't think no. so. So I don't know. It's it's interesting. I don't really know where. Uh, I still don't super know where this show is going. This season is right. kind of still seems aimless. I feel like we haven't gotten like an actual like, you know, th- the premise that was promised to us of the legends going around and just capturing aliens on uh, different times. That hasn't been a thing since like the burger episode, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of a shame. Uh, I guess I the, in like the karaoke one, too. But I do think we're going to be moving into that, though, with the the reveal with Spooner and the fact that she's now talking to the alien and yeah. like understands the alien and stuff like that. Like, I think, I think the next episode is going to be alien heavy. I think it's going to be alien and Spooner heavy. I think that's going to be the focus of it. That and figuring out like how he cloned Caitlin in the way that he did or something like that. So Sarah, you mean? Sarah, yes. Thank yes. you. I don't know why I said <laughs> I was like, who's Caitlin? I know. That just doesn't relate to anyone. I don't know how I got that name, but we'll just skip past that. Anyway. But anyway, that's Legends of Tomorrow this week. Not a whole ton yes. to say. Uh, kind of a on, kind of a filler episode. It was supposed to be a plot-heavy mm-hmm. episode, but they didn't really, you know, give us a whole lot. Um, hopefully, by, by next week, uh, everyone will meet back up. That's when the show, I think, will pick up steam again. Um, yeah. But we'll see. I'm Dylan. That's Dan. We'll catch y'all next week for some more talk about Legends of Tomorrow. See y'all later. See you guys.